Oh, I wonder when I'll get this sewn out. G'day guys, episode 4, sewing dates. Yeah, this one's a bit of a sticky one. So the new rules state that we have to have our paddocks sewn out for the 1st of October, unless you are in south of Otago and you've got an extension till the 1st of November for a few years I understand. Now, yeah, this is annoying. This is really annoying. There's a lot of people don't have their crops grazed by the 1st of October. Me personally, I'm going to have cattle on till the 3rd or the 4th, um, so I'm not going to have it sewn out by then. Yes, we've got till the 1st of November, but, but that's only for a few years. We don't know when that, well, I think there's a date in there when that's going to end. We don't know what's going to happen when that comes to, so that'll be interesting. Um, there's quite a few things around it. Obviously the weather, we can't control the weather, which means we can't work to dates for that. We have other issues. Some crops don't want to be sown by the 1st of October. We take kale, for example, put it in too early. It can go to seed at the other end of the season really early. When it goes to seed, it's really not good for stock. The reason a lot of people say fodder beet is because it holds its quality. You can keep stock on fodder beet right through to mid-November because it's very late to go to seed. So that's a great one, but once again, can't have it sown by the dates required, can we? So apparently the whole reason for this is because they are worried about sediment running off these paddocks. Now I just want you to have a look at this. This is in high rainfall they talk about. See these grooves here? They're a foot deep. And there's another one right here. So they're just these big slabs we've cut in here. I grubbed this up just a few days ago. Just the old Duncan grubber on the back of the tractor. We always get in and do this early. My theory behind it is that if we get a decent rainfall right now, I mean this, this is a reasonably flat paddock. This is not steep at all. Yes, we do do steep stuff, but we don't rip the steep stuff very deep. Um, if we have a massive rainfall right now, the water's going to go in. This soil is damp, don't get me wrong, quite moist. But it's got a hell of a lot of water holding capacity left. It's actually drying out quite nice, as you can see on the tops there. But uh, yeah, so we're told the overland flow is the issue. Yet, as I said in my last video, you're far more likely to get overland flow issues from grass when you make a hell of a mess in the rain and that. Now for us personally it's it's a frustration rather than a than a what do you call it an ultimatum. We do traditionally try and get our grass sown in September but we we haven't done any cropping here for a long time. We started up again nine years ago so we, we need to get around our farm for regrassing. So what that means is that we're single cropping, so we just do one year of sweets and then it goes back into a perennial pasture. So we've got a big area, it's within the 10%, but it's a big area and we want it back fast. So we aim to get all of our grass sown by the end of September. That said, we have succeeded in 12 out of 19 paddocks for doing that. There are, let me think for a minute, at least seven. So four paddocks have been sown in October. One of them was the first, admittedly, so I don't know whether that would fall in or not. And the other ones have been sown, I think the 9th, the 12th, and the 17th of November. So that would require us getting resource consent. We don't know whether we're going to need that when we sow the crops. So we've got to get a consent that costs money, a lot of money, potentially, for something we don't know if we're going to need. Um, that's really frustrating. So here we are in my singles. These girls are still grazing away, so we haven't done anything here yet. As you can see, this ground is a bit wet. We've had a bit of rain, not a huge amount, but also these girls have been urinating all over it, which is what happens, obviously. Filling that soil up with some beautiful nitrogen for the crops to come, or young grass in our case. As you can see down there, though, like it's it's considerably dry where they haven't been hanging out. Anyway, you get a lot of rain on this. You're going to get some movement, don't get me wrong, but we have measures in place to prevent that making it to waterways. In this case, we have that whole paddock down there where the edge of this paddock is oh, 200 metres from the waterway, at least. So you've got the end of the crop 
Then you've got a grass paddock at 200 metres, and then you've got the waterway. So there's 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 not much chance of anything happening down there. Um, the other thing is that when water does run off this, it tends not to get that discoloured. It'll be a bit discoloured, don't get me wrong. But when you have water run off a grass break, it is reasonably discoloured. So, once again, I just, I'm not too sure that they, uh, they've stuck to common sense here. I think this is just another way of forcing us to farm under consent. And as you can see up here where the girls haven't really been for a while, there's, there they go up on the hill up there. I mean, they can come here if they want, but the food's over there. Been a bit lazy, I didn't pick those standards up up the hill when I went the wires up, but they'll be right. Give them tomorrow. But yeah, this is, this is looking pretty good. Once again, all those little cracks opening up. Yeah, if it rains, water's going to go down then. It's going to fill them up, and you'll be amazed how much that holds. It doesn't look like much, but when you actually realise how much rainfall we get, I mean, it's measured in millimetres, isn't it? Yeah, it doesn't add up to a whole lot. We get a metre a year here, so spread a metre of water over, over a whole year. Yeah, so there's, there's plenty of issues to go with it. There's uh, another serious one that I don't think has been given much thought, is people are going to rush in to try and to work around when it's too wet and that just results in massive compaction issues now if you want to create runoff create compaction because if you remove the soil's ability to breathe you remove its ability to hold water and to take water in um, that's going to be a big one moving forward because you put a date on when we have to have crop sown boy or, or grass re sown boy and that's exactly what's going to happen sorry guys bloody phone battery went flat anyway uh, just to wrap up I'd really like to see us all get behind Fed Farmers here and their, uh, well Fed Farmers in Southland and their campaign to just flatly refuse to apply for consent. It's obviously their target. I mean, they're giving us no other option but to do so. Yeah, it really is great to see them uh, standing up for us and, and really pulling their weight there. Um, so I think, I think it'd be really nice if we could, but we need to make sure that we get as many farms on board with that as possible because if just a small few of us do it, we're gonna get pinged for it. If three quarters of the farmers in South and Otago do it, they can't prosecute us all. So we really need to get that all sorted out. Anyway guys, thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed it. Hope it sort of clarified a few more things for you. This is the last episode today, so we'll uh, see you back with normal weekly updates next week.